So then we get the face-to-face. It's Rollins, it's Punk. Just that visual alone, I thought, was a great way just to kind of set up what we're in for and how exciting things are going to be. And Rollins gets on the mic and he said, you abandoned this place 10 years ago. And while you were gone, you actively tried to tear it down. So don't you dare come back in here and call this place your home. This is my house now. And as a leader here, it's my responsibility to protect this place from people like you. And a lot of what he was saying there, you know, is kind of similar to what Hangman Page uh, said to Punk in that promo that started all this shit a couple of years ago. The big difference is, number one, you understand this one makes sense where Hangman Page's comments seem to be coming out of left field, which I think was the uh, the the problem there. And that's what you know is going to make this promo and this program so good is that how much reality there really is and that Seth Rollins has gone on record saying that he didn't really like CM Punk, that he was an asshole and he came off like a douchebag and didn't care much for him. Having them work together now, I think is just going to be really, really excellent TV because it can go like so many different directions. So after Seth was done saying his piece, laying into CM Punk, he said that he wants CM Punk on Monday Night Raw. And he referenced how this is his last chance. His legacy's on the line. This is his last chance to make something of his career. He is either going to self-destruct, and Seth said he'll close and slam the door on his legacy himself, or if you have changed and you do still have gas left in your tank, I'll be the one to expose you and show you exactly what it means to be the best in the world. I will run circles, wrestle circles around you, he said, which I thought was great. And that's confidence. That's Punk. That's Rollins telling Punk, you know, in real time, you know, yeah, you might uh, have the CM Punk name, you know, but me and you get in the ring, you're going to see how good I've become since you've been gone. And I like that. And after Seth was done saying his piece, Punk got on the mic and said, that was your free pass to talk to me disrespectfully. He goes, now, he said, Adam Pierce, where are you at? Now is as good a time as any to make it official. I am officially entering the Royal Rumble. And if I win the Royal Rumble, maybe it's you that I'm coming after. And then walks away. And I'm like, oh, that's so good. Because it almost, it almost vindicates me because I've been harping on this situation for so long. I said, I'm worried about WrestleMania 40. I'm worried about Cody's story because... He's going to have to win the Rumble to challenge Roman because I cannot see a scenario where the winner of the Royal Rumble would not challenge Roman. So you've booked yourself into a corner now. If you want to do Cody and Gunther as the final two again, you mean to tell me Cody's going to win again? He came in at number 30 and then tossed out Gunther? That's not a very babyface thing to do last year. So maybe this year he comes in at number one. But if he comes in at number one and then Gunther comes in at number 30, maybe Gunther should be the one to eliminate him. But I think Gunther might be out of the picture now that Punk is back. And I feel like now, I think what they should do is have CM Punk and Cody Rhodes be the final two in the Rumble. And even though I would love to see Cody win the Rumble and win the title at WrestleMania, I was worried about the predictability aspect of that. And I said, Cody winning the Rumble is just going to basically tell you the night of the Rumble what the finish of WrestleMania is going to be. We're going to know in January what we're going to see at the end of night two. Is that what you want? And what can you do between now and then that might cast doubt in the fan's mind? And that's where I was stumped. I said, what does WWE do in this situation? Because if Cody, like for example, if Cody doesn't win the Rumble, you would just think whoever does is challenging Roman. I would if I'm a star. So what they're doing here with Punk and Rollins, I feel like is planting that seeds of hatred. Rollins told Punk right to his face, I hate you. And I think that plants those seeds, sows those seeds of of anger and hate. And a lot of things can happen between the two of them, between now and the Royal Rumble on TV. Now I feel like, where I haven't felt this way before, now I feel like, oh, okay, now you've got, now you've given yourself a scenario where you could actually have the winner of the Rumble not challenge Roman. Because if you get enough anger and animosity and hatred between Rollins and Punk, when Punk wins the Rumble, I'd say it's I say it's Cody and Punk the final two and Punk eliminates Cody. It could be with help from somebody or something, I don't know. Or Cody could, you know, feel screwed or whatever, but Punk and Cody, Punk eliminate it gives you that little taste of Punk and Cody in the ring together. 
Just a little taste of what we'll see in the future between them. Punk and Cody, final two. Punk wins the Rumble. And instead of doing this shit where, you know, you go on TV the next week or you have to take two weeks to decide to make your decision of which champion to challenge, if Punk really has all this pent-up hatred and anger and animosity for Seth Rollins, if I'm Punk, I'm grabbing the mic right out of the announcer's hand right after I win the Royal Rumble that night. Get on the top rope as I'm pointing to the WrestleMania sign, and I'm saying, Seth, I'll see you there as the fucking fireworks go off. I would waste no time. I would let it it be known right there who I'm challenging, because that gives him reason, motivation to not challenge Roman. His hatred for Seth Rollins isn't something that he needs to think about. He doesn't have to go home and sleep on it. Hmm, who am I going to challenge? No, I want to kill this fucking guy. I hate him. I want to take his title from him. My... My dislike for Seth Rollins is more important to me than unseating Roman Reigns for his championship. And now you've got a reason. And that's all I asked. And all year long, you guys have every, who's here every week, you know how many times I've mentioned this. I said, do you really go that predictable route, the winner of the Rumble? Because everybody said, Greg, Cody doesn't have to win the Rumble. I said, yes, he does. Because the winner of the Rumble is going to want Roman. Because people were mentioning the Cody getting the shot another way before Punk even came back. But I said, no, 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 that wouldn't work. Because why would the person winning the Rumble challenge Seth? Makes no sense. It makes sense if it's Punk. Because Punk hates him. So that's what I would do. I would have Punk and Cody as your final two, which again, might be kind of predictable. They've already set that up. That could be our final two. Punk and Cody, final two, Punk wins. Punk immediately after the match, not wait, don't wait till Monday Night Raw, none of that. Immediately after winning the Royal Rumble, get on the mic, Seth Rollins, I'm coming after you. I'll see you at WrestleMania. And boom, there's your night one main event. Then Cody, the next night on Monday Night Raw, he comes out for a promo. I'm disappointed. I don't know what happened. I have a story to finish. And that story was taken away from me. Fuck, maybe it's one of the Bloodline guys. Maybe Solo comes out there or Jimmy or even Roman, but probably Solo or Jimmy, and tries to do something to get Cody out, basically saying, Roman's afraid of you. He doesn't want to have to go through that again because he knows you had him beat at WrestleMania 39, and he might not be that lucky at WrestleMania 40. So maybe he's sent the bloodline out to get rid of Cody. And maybe it's Solo and Jimmy hitting the ring, eliminating Cody early in the Rumble or something, or maybe just doing something like what happened at WrestleMania 39. Remember Solo jumped up, boom, Samoan spike, only this time maybe CM Punk doesn't see it. It's Cody and Punk, they're both down in the ring, Punk's, you know, laying on his stomach with his head down, Solo comes in the ring, boom, Samoan spike to Cody Rhodes, CM Punk eliminates him, and then challenges Seth Rollins. And then Cody on Raw the next night is pissed off, rightfully so, you know, I had a story to finish and you are afraid of me. You sent your goons out there to eliminate me from the Royal Rumble because you know you can't beat me, you fucking pussy. And maybe Adam Pearce and Nick Aldis have an agreement and the Elimination Chamber match is made to determine who Roman's challenger is. Or maybe Roman defends in the chamber. I don't know. I feel like he's got to be there. It's Australia. It's a big show. So Roman might be defending the title in the chamber. I kind of hope not, but he might be. Or you do the chamber to determine his challenger, and then some sort of deal is struck. Or maybe Cody has to win a match. Maybe Cody says, I don't want you guys to give me any something for nothing. I have to. How about I beat Solo and Jimmy in a handicap match? If I win, I get in the chamber. Maybe they do it the same night. Maybe at Elimination Chamber, it's Cody. Oh, that's a lot of adversity, though. <laughs> that's a lot of adversity. Maybe Cody's got to like run the gauntlet against Solo and Jimmy. If he beats them both, then he gets entered into the Elimination Chamber in the main event. And so then he essentially has two matches, then gets entered into the chamber, and then wins that. You know, so basically doing, throwing every obstacle, every bit of adversity that you possibly can in front of Cody. And he's going to be, he's going to be on TV after the Royal Rumble saying, shit, I didn't win the Rumble. I'm on Raw. Roman's on SmackDown. I have no path to complete my story, you know, unless one creates itself for me. And so maybe he's, he's scrambling then to find a way to finish that story, and he sees a way to get there through the Elimination Chamber match somehow, and maybe he earns that in Australia, and then that sets up Roman and Cody. And then you've got your night one and your night two main event set. 
Seth Rollins versus CM Punk main event night one. You know, CM Punk has always wanted a main event at WrestleMania, and maybe part of Triple H and CM Punk's nego negotiation was, hey, we have two nights of WrestleMania now. Not a four-night extravaganza, but a two-night event now. Main eventing a WrestleMania is a little easier to do. So if that's still a selling point for you, if that's still something that you want to accomplish for your career, the best I can do is give you night one against Seth Rollins. And then there you go. And that's where Punk takes his loss. And I think Seth Rollins beats CM Punk in the main event of night one and then maybe gets cashed in on by Damian Priest right after the match. I kind of thought Damian Priest's cash-in would come at the Rumble. I thought Rollins and Punk would wrestle at the Rumble, but apparently that's probably going to be WrestleMania now, and maybe you do the cash-in on night one. Damian Priest walks out as champion after Rollins beats Punk. Maybe Rollins beats Punk, and then Punk snaps, GTSs him, kicks his ass, and then Priest comes out and cashes in. Something like that could be great. Either way, I feel like whether... Whether Rollins walks out of WrestleMania as the champion or not, I feel like he beats CM Punk in their match. In their first match, whenever that is, <laughs> which is probably going to be WrestleMania, I think Rollins beats him. And then on night two, Cody finishes his story. So it's not like the, the Cena and Batista thing where they both win the title at WrestleMania 21. Don't do that with Punk and Cody maybe do it with Priest and Cody, or just have Cody be the only male wrestler to win a world championship on that weekend and just have Rollins retain. But Priest, you got to factor him in. I've said right from the start, he is going to win that world heavyweight title. I'm convinced Damian Priest will win the world heavyweight championship and he will successfully cash in his money in the bank briefcase. I've been saying that for months. I don't feel like they're going to do him wrong in this scenario. What's cool about CM Punk is he brings so much interest and buzz. You know, he doesn't necessarily need to have a title for his feuds. And that's why if his first one is for a championship, he then loses that to Rollins, and then Priest goes on to win the title and whatever, and then Punk can move into something, move on to something with Roman Reigns at SummerSlam, and then eventually get another title shot later against Cody Rhodes. So there's so much to do here, but I feel like in my head, that's the best scenario for WrestleMania is Punk and Rollins night one, where Rollins wins, potentially loses in a cash-in, and Cody finishes his story on night two. And now with Punk winning the Rumble, that actually can be interesting to watch Cody try to finish that story instead of making it predictable like I felt like it was going to be up until now. So that's where I kind of see it going, and I think it's going to be fun to watch that unfold.